Hello, and welcome to our inaugural show of Lucky Rock Wine Lounge. The same show we did before, but we sit in more comfortable chairs. We used to call it Cellar Rats into Cellar Rats, but we decided it was time to change things up, get a little more comfy. Loungy. Put our Nikes on, take our high heels off. Let's make it happen. Take our pants off, maybe. Whoa. Uh, and what's your name? I'm Aaron Inman, formerly known as Ice Ice Baby. You'll get that later. I'm Jesse Inman, and... That's my name. So today we're gonna to be talking about chilling red wines. What to expect, which wines to do it with, how to do it. Seems like you might not need steps on how to do it, but you'd be surprised. It's pretty complicated And I know what you're thinking. It's basically wine 101 to not put red wine in the fridge, but it works. We're culture breakers. We're breaking culture. Creating new culture. Culture nuevo, we call it. You finding these episodes funny, informative? Educational, none of the above. Maybe consider smashing that fat red button at the bottom of the page somewhere and subscribe to our channel. When you look at our website, we do a lot of other content like pornography uh, blogs and you can see our videos there. And also, believe it or not, we sell wine that we make. So while we discuss chilling red wines, we're gonna sap on one of these chilled red wines. Today, we've got Edmund St. John, Bone Jolly Gamay Noir from El Dorado County. This wine, I discovered this maybe six, seven months ago, and I absolutely love it. Chilled. Yep, fun wine, fun name. And uh, if chilling your wine is cool, we're Miles Davis, because we're... <laughs> 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 so this particular wine, I said it's from El Dorado Hills, which is up in the Sierra Foothills. It's a Gamay Noir. It's from a ranch called Barsodi that's 3,000 feet up in the Sierras. And it's got granite soil similar to they have in Beaujolais, France, where this grape is native to. So do you know, do they do carbonic on this? They don't do carbonic. They actually destem this and they ferment it in stainless steel and then age it in stainless steel. Because it is very light, which is light is good for chilled wine. He, puts this in the bottle pretty early on too in February. So it's really meant, it lends itself to everything we're gonna be talking about today. A nice light, low tannin, decent acid red wine with some good fruit. Yeah. Now in some instances, you wanna chill your red wines. You should chill your red wines. You goddamn should. You might say <laughs> chilling your red wine is a chill thing to do. So let's talk about what changes when you chill a red wine. Because it changes, man. The wine doesn't change, but the way you perceive it is changed. And so the things that are perceived differently typically are uh, tannins, alcohol, flavor slash aromatics, and acid. Kind of the four major components of wine sensory. Yeah, yeah, they're all changed. Yeah, you're gonna have a different experience with them based mm -hmm. off the temperature of the wine. Yeah, just like me when I'm in a bad mood, different experience with me. Never Fuck experienced me. that. So in, in wine, we talk about acid a lot. That's one of the major differences from a lot of other alcoholic beverages is acid. Yes, that and the music festivals. And music festivals and face paint, glow sticks. That's right. Other stuff, the kids know, the kids know. Like and subscribe, but acid. So when you're chilling a red wine, what's changing about the acid? So again, not much is changing, but it's it's uh, competing with different things in the wine. Things, uh, acid's a little bit more aggressive, a little bit more angular. And basically tannins, the next one we're gonna talk about is the same thing. It's, it's just, everything gets a little bit more, so when things are warm, they're, they're more spread out, and when things are colder, they're more tightly packed together. So things are gonna feel more just intense when things are colder. So if I'm the average consumer, which is watching currently, how am I gonna experience that wine differently from an acid and tannin standpoint? Well, it's just the acid will be more pronounced. Okay. The tannin will be more, maybe aggressive and more angular. And let's say I don't know what the word pronounced means. Pronounced means, <laughs> <laughs> pronounced means like more gooder. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, let's yeah. get in the trap. <laughs> so to sum it up, chilling red wine is delicious. Yes. Okay, so outside of tannin and acid, there's, uh, flavor slash aromatics mm -hmm. and, and alcohol. And alcohol. And alcohol is a major component of wine. It's about anywhere from 12 to 15, <laughs> 16%. Actually. Oh, look at the factoid. The big brain on Brad. Is it Brad or Jesse. Brad? I always Jesse. forget. Jesse. So 
the alcohol actually reacts. There's a sensor in your in your mouth that hmm. reacts to ethanol. Like a robot. Like a robot. And and so the more ethanol there is, you actually get a greater like heat hot sensation in your mouth. And so when you cool that that red wine, you're actually not activating that receptor. And so the wine doesn't quite quite have that burning feel that like it can have at you know, room temperature or even elevated, especially if you're starting with a really alcoholic wine. Okay, and how about aromatics? How do they change? So we're really only smelling volatile uh, chemicals, compounds. What is it like 90% of your taste is actually smell? Yep, exactly. You're getting most of that flavor is actually enhanced by your smell in your retro nostril, retro nostril. which is in your kneecap. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, so it's <laughs> mathematically speaking. This is a technical show. I didn't say it at the beginning. Yeah. But so what's happening there is you're, you're reducing the, the volatility of those aromatics, so you're getting less of them. It's like if you go to a swamp that's frozen, you're not going to smell the swamp. You're not going to smell the... the yeah. yeah. And so that's, uh, that's what's happening when you, from an aromatic standpoint and from an alcohol standpoint, they're kind of interrelated in a way. One of them has to do with the receptor in your mouth not getting turned on by the alcohol, the ethanol, and then you've got the aromatics not being as volatile. Yeah, well... Alcohol is pretty volatile too, so that's going to shut down the volatility of alcohol, which actually lifts aromatics out of the glass too, sure. right? And which traditionally a lot of people would have said, oh, that's all negative. You're getting less smell, less flavor, but it's it's all about then kind why of is it the more experience. enjoyable? Exactly. Yeah. It's all about the experience of the wine. And, and I think a lot of times, especially with uh, California wines, where they can be have a lot of aromatics and have a lot of alcohol, you actually can bring those more into like balance. Rain, rain it in, champ. Yeah. Rain it in. Bring it into a little more balance. Word. With, uh, with some Well, chill. I have had this before and I have not had it chilled and I, I do appreciate it chilled. We'll talk about this a little later. We did a little hack. We threw it in the freezer. As people do. So the wines most suitable for chilling right off the bat are Gamay Noir. Yeah. Um, you can make Gamay Noir in a couple different styles. Some are more conducive for being chilled. Uh, Pinot Noir. But it's normally what? Lower... Higher acid, lower tannin yep. ones? Higher acid, lower tannin, uh, generally has nice fruity aromatics. So when you are chilling down some of those volatiles we were talking about, you still have a fair amount of fruit. Yeah. Um, not overly tannic, so you're not, when you're when you're numbing down some of those other components, you're not getting overwhelmed by tannin that's still there. Yeah, like if you, if you chilled a cab, it'd be like. It could be a little rough. Now, a little bit of a chill is cool. You know, I like to keep this in the fridge and mm. then pull it out kind of like a rosé and then let it, you know, it slowly kind of warms up. I heard up you like to thing. serve your bone jolly a little differently than that. <laughs> <laughs> so you go to juvenile hall and you're labeled for the rest of your life. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so yeah, I mean, if to kind of, to kind of reiterate, lower tannin, uh, fruitier styles, uh, moderate to higher acidity, and maybe lower to mid-range alcohol are, are like good candidates. Because in all reality, most people drink their reds too warm and their whites too cold. Probably so, yeah, that's probably fair. With wine, a lot of times people are just inherit what they've been told. And it, it's a, we've always kind of been told, oh, putting your red wine in the fridge is like a cardinal sin. The reality is you can do whatever you want to do and it will benefit you a little bit, in my opinion, from a from an experience standpoint, to put that like You're not my real mom. You don't tell me what <laughs> yeah, to you do. Don't, you do what you want. You're yeah. your own man. Yeah. Because the reality is it's not like a shot of bourbon. This, you're going to pour that in a glass and it's going to sit there. You're going to chat. It's going to warm up in the glass. And so you'll start with a nice chill on it and then it'll get up to room temperature as opposed to maybe starting at room temperature and getting up to too warm. Yeah. Or throw some ice cubes in it. All right, and so we didn't want to waste all of your time listing off all the producers and varietals that we think make good chilled red wine. So here, possibly or here, maybe here, or maybe right here, <laughs> That's probably the best is a nice for infographic for you to go out and do a little research, right as they here. call it. So we're no longer petrified about putting our red wines in the fridge or the freezer to put a little chill on them. So that's, if you've learned anything on this episode, that's number one. Yeah. You can throw your wine in the fridge for 20 minutes. I mean, there's no exact science. It's just kind of enhancing the wine and then just let it slowly warm up as you drink it. And do, do some experimenting. I mean, there's some wines like this Bone Jolly Gamay Rosé website over here if you'd like to purchase it. Uh, you're welcome, whoever owns St. Edmund's John. You know, I like to, like I said earlier, I keep this in the fridge at all times and it's a red wine. So, uh, but to do a little bit of experimenting, but don't be afraid of the fridge as your friend with uh, chilling down some red wine. Yeah, and throw some ice cubes in it. If you, if we have a blog about all that stuff. You can make wine into ice cubes and then not water down your wine, etc. But it's kind of a fun way, especially drinking in the summertime, to keep your wine chill. Like that's one thing you could just, if you're gonna have a party, just put your red wines in the fridge and then bring them out for the party. 
But if you're thinking ahead, like Jesse was saying, buy duplicates of the wines, pour one of them in an ice tray and freeze those overnight and pop those in your glass. And if you're a slow meandering talker like myself, then your wine stays nice and And chill. now they don't have to read the blog, but you've got the idea. It's a well-written blog. You'll enjoy it. <laughs> I spent a lot of time on it. Another way to like quickly get a chill on your red wine is use your freezer. Um, don't forget the- Or wine. liquid nitrogen. <laughs> liquid yeah. nitrogen. For our scientists out there, if you're Fancy Pants McGee, which is also, you know, we don't, we don't uh, what do they call it, discriminate here. You got a fancy wine cellar, just keep the wine down there and pull it out at the right temperature. That's all good too. He just keeps going. He just keeps going. <laughs> canned red wines also chill well. Yeah, red wine and can is like a perfect marriage with yeah. chilling red wine. Well, probably they chill faster than a bottle in the grand scheme. Yeah, huh? the aluminum too, mm -hmm. smaller volume. All that lends itself to chilling a little quicker. Uh, basically, they're ice chest ready, as I like to say. Yeah. Point. Yeah. All right, children, what did we learn today? Uh, that we have a sweet ass sign. You can chill your red wine. Check. Check. Um, wine and can chills faster. Check. Check. And that I like it. All right, so get yourself down to your favorite liquor store, wine shop, grocery store, get yourself some red wine and start chilling. And we'll see you on the next episode. <laughs>